Uh, good afternoon, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. So we want to present our uh, article, our research. Uh, the title is ASEAN and EU in handling the COVID-19 outbreak, a comprehensive study between supranational organizations. So uh, my name is Azmi. Uh, beside me is uh, Yovita and Graha as my college of this research. So first of all, Yovita will uh, explain the our background of our research. So Yovita. Okay, thank you, Azmi. Okay. Uh, so I want to uh, explain about the introduction first. The spread of coronavirus was first detected in Wuhan, China in December 2019, uh, designated by uh, WHO as, it, as a global pandemic. At this time, all countries and individual organizations in the world re region are fighting each other to fight the uh, and survive this pandemic. On April 14, 2020, uh, ASEAN held a summit, the APT Summit ASEAN Plus 3, and the ASEAN Summit on June 2006, 2020, uh, specifically to discuss cooperation in handling COVID-19. Okay, next, uh, Akbar Azmi will continue. All right, thank you, Yofita. So the COVID-19 pandemic is focused on the two things because all the, uh, I mean, like the all the countries focus on the two things. That is a health sector and economic sector. So uh, based on the uh, uh, beside the European Union, um, ASEAN have uh, some uh, uh, quite I mean like important uh, principles named the non-interference. So non-interference is one of important factor which indirectly affects the management of prevention preventions of the COVID-19 in ASEAN members. So uh, that's why the uh, the ASEAN is not like the European Union to. So, they need some um, the, the big countries such as uh, Australia, uh, Russia, or China. So uh, that's why there is uh, some forum named ASEAN Plus Three or ASEAN Plus uh, One. So uh, that's why uh, he they need to to produce the uh, vaccines. So also the uh, to to develop vaccines and also to uh, export. Man, I mean, like to export the. Uh, health tools like ventilators, as examples uh, to handling that 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 pandemic COVID-19. So Jovita will continue um, to explain uh, our methods of this research. So Jovita. Okay, thank you, Asmi. Uh, so the method that we use is a type of mixed methods, the concurrent transformative design by Hanson et al. Uh, they state that this type of research is guided uh, by a theoretical perspective and uses an advocacy lens. This type uh, allows the collection of quantitative and qualitative data to be to be done together with the possibility of an unbalanced priority index. As part of this process, uh, analysis can be carried out during interpretation or if there is a transformation transformation process, the analysis can also be carried out in parallel with the data processing process. This type of concurrent transformative design is generally used to provide alternative thoughts, advocacy, or new understanding of a phenomenon. Uh, so uh, Akbar Asmi will uh, explain the result of this uh, analysis. Please, Akbar. Right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Yofita. Well, I will explain about the uh, our qualitative uh, methods based on the qualitative methods. So, we we use uh, survival theory to analyze this uh, this this issue. So, as we found, the cooperation carried out by the ASEAN has not provide, has not surfaced because uh, each country is more focused on domestic policies to save their uh, to save their communities, they save our residents. That's why the, uh, uh, the the importance of the ASEAN is not quite effective to handling these uh, pandemic issues. So, however, this pairing should also be accompanied by the knowledge that there are differences in the background and nature between ASEAN and European Union as organizations. So, uh, based on that, so uh, Christy will uh, explain more the the qu quantitative methods regarding our uh, results in this uh, topics. So, Christy. Okay, thank you, Asmi. Uh, for the quantitative, we use that one instrument, which will become uh, which uh, uh, focused on institutional commitment and budgetary commitment. There are 10 indicators that we use to see if uh, the organizations is already committed to, to handling COVID-19 situations 
There are regulations, state aid, medical equipment, guidelines, single market, budget availability, citizens protection, information and research cooperation, recovery budget and plan, and disinformation. From the 10 indicators above, uh, transfers on a commitment scale using ordinary ordinal level data in five classifications, ASEAN has a total commitment of 70 uh, percent because it already has seven out of 10 indicators of regional commitment. In other words, ASEAN is quite committed to handling the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we took the conclusions about this uh, study is unlike the European Union, the implementation of cooperation in ASEAN is less visible as a unity. Several factors are causing this to happen in this region. And in the future, there are three main points for ASEAN can improve in the context of cooperation. The first one is to, uh, the availability of regulations. Second one is state aid. And the third one is recovery budget and plan. Uh, however, the nature of ASEAN and the European Union is indeed different. So that when, we con when compared to the Euro European mechanism, ASEAN does not have a direct mechanism to respond both in terms of economic assistance to its countries and binding regulations. I think that's all for the conclusions. Over to Asmi. All right. Thank you, Christy. So that's all our presentations regarding these topics and uh, based on our research. So thank you for your intentions and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.